show with this one very quick tidbit of news, and that is Miami Hurricanes defensive lineman Gregory Rousseau, top 10 potential NFL draft pick, was expected to be one of the top defenses in the country at, at the Hurricanes. Um, he is opting out for the season. He told Manny Diaz today he is opting out of this season. He's going to prepare for the NFL draft. Uh, this is maybe the the biggest opt out. I mean, obviously we had Rashad Bateman, we had Micah Parsons. You know, we we've had some big times that have have opted out. I don't know that any are more important to a team than Russo was to Miami. Uh, I don't know. I think Bateman was. Pr- I think Parsons was pretty big too. Yeah, I don't know. Ru- Russo, I don't know how great that Penn State defense is. I think Parsons hit a lot of flaws. And also, I think Bateman is a big target for that offense. Oh no, I I agree. I agree. Uh, Russo, six foot seven, two hundred sixty five pounds. He led the ACC with nineteen and a half tackles for loss. He had fifteen and a half sacks last year, despite starting only no, seven a of his thirteen. He's games. a monster. Yeah. But I didn't have ex. I guess the difference is I actually had expectations for the other two teams. I didn't have any expectations for Miami. This is a great dude on a bad team. Yeah, and and now here's the thing. Miami had the chance this season with Derek King at corner, all right, uh, quarterback. They'd already lost a really important offensive lineman, their most experienced, their best one, their best NFL prospect. He opted out over a month ago. Yeah, I was about to say he opted out long ago. Yeah, I mean, it's it's kind of a, a deal. Uh, the Brown Yeti said, man, don't you know the best Wi-Fi is at McDonald's? Uh, people just aren't looking for us there. That's <laughs> talking about the Yetis. I love it. Uh, Michael Fritch said, I think players opting out could make this season a little more interesting. Yeah, it's going to make... It's going to make betting lines really interesting. It's going to make um, it really well. Eventually, once once the opt outs are done, we'll we'll all the lines will, will stabilize pretty easily. Yeah. Um, I I think this is this is a whole lot of agents getting into players' ears saying, oh, "Hey, yes. you don't need this last year." I mean, how many of us were saying this? I I love Tadavion Clowney. I love him, and I loved watching him play college football. Okay, and I was even in agreement liking. South Carolina and loving what he was doing there. And I was even like, man, why is he playing this year? Why is he doing it? He's going to hurt himself. I mean, that guy, he's going to hurt himself. No one else is going to hurt him. He's going to hurt himself because he's that explosive. He was that strong. He was that big. He was that fast. Yeah. That was, that was what, six years ago, five years ago? I mean. 2013, 2014, somewhere in there. Yeah, it was, it was a while back. Now, in the in the world of COVID, and we don't really know how these teams are running things, but you can go train with like four guys that are all quarantined in some complex in Arizona that your agents fit in the bill for for the next you know eight months. Who didn't want to do that? You got Eat great point. food, stay in a five star hotel. Come on, man. Yeah, no, you've got a very valid point. Uh, Michael said, I, it, it I, gives- I, I get it. I'll tell you this, I get it. I fully understand if I was a top tier talent and I wasn't on a team that I thought could compete for a national title, I I I think I'd walk to. Well, I mean, if if you're, you know, almost guaranteed a first round draft slot. Yeah, if you've got that kind of grade, now I, you better have that kind of grade. Yeah. But if you got that kind of grade, then otherwise, if if you I'll are, tell you this, you'll be ready for the combine. Yeah. Because basically, you're going to be studying for the test the whole year. And everybody else is going to study for it for two months like they normally do. But if you got a, a late second, maybe third or fourth round grade, I mean, that, it's a if little you risky. don't play, it, that could drop you to fifth, sixth, seventh. I mean, yeah. maybe even out no, of the no, draft. No, I, I think this is film. for the elites of the elites that have no reason playing. Yeah. Uh, Michael said it gives other kids opportunities. Maybe other teams could be competitive. Yeah, it's 100% true. Terry oh, I said, completely uh, agree with that. Talking, Next man up. Talking Somebody's about the, going to get a chance to play in Miami. Talking about the McDonald's Wi-Fi, Terry said they won't let us in McDonald's down here right now. That's why we can't find you. Both sit in the parking lot. That. <laughs> uh, I do Hugh, a lot of work for my McDonald's parking lots because yeah. I I need Wi-Fi to do some of it. Uh, D jumped in on Periscope. He said, "What's the toughest conference right now?" The well, the SEC. It's not it's close. Still, yeah, it's still the SEC. I mean, yeah, it's really, you're right. It's really not close at all. It, I mean, it's not close at all. I mean, you could you could try and make a case for the Big Ten, but. No, you can't. There's one juggernaut there. Everybody else, if you if somebody shot Ohio State in the head and drug them out to a field, that would be an incredibly fun conference to watch. Yeah. Because everybody else down the road until you get to Maryland's Rutgers and a couple of those other teams, 
I'm, the separation between two and eight is nothing. Yeah, it's completely negligible. I mean, it's. Yeah. I think. I think it is tight. Negligible for sure. All right, I think that's gonna wrap it up. I hadn't seen anything else break. Um, I'm checking. Uh, the only thing, only news that I've gotten. What's that? Is my damn kids are out of school again next week. Uh, aren't they out of school for a little while? Or no, they were supposed to start Monday. Oh, so it, but it's one more week. They just pushed it Jesus back. Jesus Christ! It's a, yeah, it's a little bit of a disaster. So I, my wife's a teacher in. Here's Memphis, the problem: I don't and... have a problem with them being out of school still. My wife, the teacher, can't be made to go back to school. All right, you yeah. can't take her and leave the damn kids. Uh, I got a job. Let's see. Brown uh, Michael said um, SEC top to bottom is the toughest. Not even close. Better question: Who's the second best conference? Probably Big Ten is second best. The the Big Ten is the second best, but toughest. I toughest like, is SEC. To- it's not even close. They're just they're yeah. The Big Ten's really really good. Like the most erratic or sporadic, I think is probably the Big Twelve. Oh, agreed. Everybody think, can beat everybody. I in think their conference. unless Lincoln Riley just pulls another Heisman Trophy. You know, top, you know, first round draft quarterback out of his ass. I think there's going to be some parody in the Big 12 this year. I think there will be a lot of parody in the Pac 12 as well. Now, it won't be quite what the Big 12 is. I don't know. But in the, in the Pac 12, I think Oregon to separate themselves a little bit. Maybe, but I mean, we got to see what they do at quarterback. I mean, who knows what they're doing? Justin Fields wasn't that great. Listen, Justin Fields was really good. Okay. I think they can replace Fields. Herbert. And, and the reason being is because they, they are running defensive football. They're building it from the defense, yeah. not the offense. And, and so U- it doesn't matter USC, so much who the quarterback is. USC is doing the exact opposite. USC is going – USC is doing offense. the exact opposite. They got three guys that can all play quarterback, and they can't stop anybody. Yep. Well, at now it's – no, I think now they've only got – the one guy, right? They only got Slovis now because uh, Sears Oh, well, is, yeah, the other two are gone. The other That's two right. transferred out. So, JT Daniels, he's at Georgia. Uh, yeah. Jack Sears is at Boise State. So, yeah, I mean, we'll see. Um, let's see. The fifth is the best half of the SEC. Um, let's see. Michael said, be thankful, Chris. I'm homeschooling my five-year-old. I'm not qualified for that. ton of field trips. Uh, Terry said, starting school Monday in Olive Branch. Joseph said. No, they're Simmons. not, Terry. No, they're not. I'm in Olive Branch right now. No, Dang. they're not. Okay. Well, then I ben, got inside information from somebody standing in that school that I'm married to that says you got to keep the kids for another week. Well, my daughter doesn't start in Memphis until uh, the 17th anyway, so you know is what it is. Well, you don't have to keep her every day and bring her to work with you. You got that right. You got that right. All right, Terry. Uh, Huey said my kids are learning how to eat rocks in the pond. Terry said I figured they'd be learning how to start fires. So that's the way it goes. That's the way it goes. Might have learned in the construction business. <laughs> Well, hey, they learn that daddy cusses a lot when he's not around them. Probably a better uh, uh, learning experience than going to school sometimes. So, Well, I'll right. tell you the words that they're using right now are fantastic. Oh, the teachers I, are going to send a lot of letters home. Oh, and I love I'm, I'm that my wife that. has to work there, so she gets the full embarrassment, and I get nothing <laughs> but joy. All right, we're getting out of here. Uh, Get out of here. There's there's nothing else to talk about just Close yet. Close it down. We uh we we might talk PGA tomorrow. I mean we'll just see what the leaderboard looks like and then go from there. But we got primetime golf tonight. That's always fun. And of course, March Madness with NHL and NBA, et cetera. Zion and the Pelicans got beat again. So either way, we are rolling. Uh Damien, everybody else that jumped in the chat, all the different mats, all the Yetis, Terry, everybody else. We appreciate you guys for jumping in and helping drive the conversation. Uh Huey. He's going to close us out. He said, don't forget how Al Bundy won the 1966 city championship. I'll never forget it. Four touchdowns. Never forget. You got that right. All right, everybody. Go to winningcureseverything.com. Make sure you are subscribed at all the proper places. Leave a nice five-star review on the podcast. And share the show out. Give the video a like. Hit that thumbs up button. You know, the thing that looks like this right here. And uh, and make sure you tell everybody you know about it and whatnot. Go over to sbrpicks.com. And find all of our latest videos on college football for sportsbookreview.com. We are looking forward to getting some previews done and whatnot, but uh, hopefully we don't have anything too drastic happen between now and the next time we do the show. Until then, everybody take care of yourself, take care of each other. We'll see you tomorrow. Thanks for checking out Winning Cures Everything. 
If you want to keep up with us, hit subscribe on YouTube or your favorite podcast app. Visit the website at winningcureseverything.com or you can like us on Facebook or follow us at Winning Cures, at Gary WCE, or at Chris B. Giannini on Twitter. Share out the show, leave a nice 